and welcome to this video tutorial on the AIM Race Studio 3 software. What we're going to do in this video is give a quick run through of the software itself because this is your main interface between your device that you have in your car with downloading the data, with updating configurations and being able to really manage uh, your devices that you have from AIM. And then what we'll do as a continuation from this video is we'll have a series of different uh, tutorials where we deep dive into certain aspects of how you'll use the actual software. So to have a quick overview, uh, let's go through the buttons on the top left hand side and up here we have uh, the first button. This is how you actually configure the Race Studio 3 software for your own particular preferences. What you'd like to see in terms of units of, uh, of measurement, for example, data download, being able to make sure that it's custom to you. And we'll talk about configuring the software that makes it so much easier to be able to manage your devices as you work uh, with the software itself. As we move over, we have configurations. Now, this is for people who have uh, AIM systems that uh, require configuration. So if you're using an AIM Solo 2, for example, this may not necessarily be as applicable as someone who's using, for example, an Evo 4S that we have here or an MXL2 or any of the devices that require configuration. This is where you will go in and you will start managing the configurations of your devices. And if I double clicked in either of these two, you'll see that there's a configuration set up for them. I won't do that now because we'll talk about that in later videos, but this is the tab where you go into your configurations. The next button over I won't click on, but this is if you wanted to be able to have a shortcut straight to the AIM Race Studio analysis software to allow you to be able to understand what's happening with your data. A useful button, um, but just a, a shortcut uh, in the menu bar. As we move over there, we then get into tracks. Now this is where all of the AIM tracks around the world are held in a database, there's thousands of them, and it'll allow you to be able to sort through them to be able to find information about the tracks themselves, and also to be able to create your own setups and configurations of tracks that you use that will make sure sorting through tracks is easier as they move them in and out of your particular devices that you're looking at. Some people, for example, will want all the tracks in their device, but when space is a premium, you want to be able to record uh, data um, and as much data as you can get from your racing, being able to save space with tracks is often uh, a good option, especially when there's 4,014 tracks available um, uh, within the database itself. Next one over is movies. Now, if I click on here, uh, we won't find anything in here just yet, but what we have here is we have uh, anyone with a SmartyCam HD. If you nominate the folder where those files are located, um, with the path manager button that is here, what will happen is that all of your SmartyCam HD files will be here and easily sortable by not only giving you the file name, but also who was driving the track, the laps, the best lap and the date. So it just makes it easier to be able to sort through your videos. Then we get into the sensor setup. Now this next button over here is custom sensors. These are the sensors that you set up and feed into the configuration of your dash or device that allow you to be able to measure certain components of your car. I have two here, one's water temperature, one's oil pressure, but a whole load of different sensors can be set up to be able to measure um, information that is there. As we move over, this is the setup for the protocols for working with, um, they're called custom CAN protocols. This is where the information that comes in from the engine management system that can be fed into the AIM Race Studio 3 software and then into your dash so that you can actually get information fed into the system um, from uh, the actual car itself or particular units that may feed into that CAN setup. I have one here from AIM Technologies focused on tire pressure monitoring system. And if I went in here, you could see uh, that there's a setup uh, for that particular set of sensors, which I want to be able to record. So very useful to be able to see um, and work with um, in relation to the data that's being brought into the unit that you can then customize and work with um, within the unit. The last button on the top left hand side here is devices. Now I don't have any devices connected right now, but if I had multiple devices connected by Wi-Fi or if I'm plugged in by USB, I can see the devices that are available um, that I can then configure. And we'll look at that later on as we work with this particular unit and we look at um, the data that's coming in from an AIM device itself. So those are the main buttons on the top left hand side. On the right hand side, we get into um, other aspects of the Wi-Fi. This button here allows you to be able to determine how to connect uh, to a device. I actually have a Solo 2 nearby, and if I clicked on here, I could click to um, I could connect to that AIM Solo. And we're going to talk about connecting to your device, configuring and downloading in later tutorials. 
This button here is where you'll go if you want to be able to do web updates. And if I click on here, this is where you'll go for two pieces of uh, different type of information or setups. The first is the software itself. And when there's going to be updates to the Race Studio 3 software, you will see that this will be uh, highlighted. Or if there's updates to firmware, which are available. And we actually have two firmware updates, which I haven't downloaded right now, down here for the Solo 2 and Solo DL. And we'll look at those in a later tutorial to be able to see how to download and manage that data as well. So that's that button there. This is if there are ECU updates that are available, just to give you the protocols and the update history that's available um, to you, just if you want to be able to have um, sort of a, 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 a log of, of uh, ECU updates and seeing what's happened over time. And then finally, we have a button here that if I clicked on here, it would go straight to the AIM website. That's the software itself. That's what all those buttons do. And for many, just looking at them to start off with going, well, what does that button do? And curiosity. Um, has probably led you to understanding what each of those buttons do. But later, as we go through this tutorial series, we're going to look at each of these particular buttons um, in more detail to see how we manage that within the software itself. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.